the rest of the Pharisees, they're all hating him. The rest of the Pharisees, they're all uh, uh, down to him. But this man, Nicodemus, praise God, listen to this, praise God for his heart. heart. What made Nicodemus different than the rest of the haters? His heart. So now, here he comes to Jesus. Now, if you know the story really well, you understand that he, he did come to Jesus, praise the Lord for that, but he did come by night. I think somebody read that in the scripture. They decided to have a little program on TV, Nick at Night. But anyway, Nicodemus, <laughs> <laughs> Nicodemus came to Jesus halfway by faith because he, he did it in the cover of night. You know why he did that, right? Because he didn't want the rest of the Pharisees to know that he was going to, 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 to get advice and counsel from Jesus. So we have to be, we have to watch it because if we're not careful, we'll be ashamed of Jesus. Uh oh, whoa, man, I hit on that right there. I said, if you're not careful, you'll be ashamed of Jesus. You know, you know he's the truth. You know he's the healer, but you'll be ashamed of uh, at your job telling people, let's pray in the name of Jesus. You'd be ashamed of laying hands. And, you know, you get cute when you get to certain places where people with money talk about in the holy name, amen. In what holy name? Jesus. You'd be afraid of saying Jesus. Jesus. You better somebody Jesus. say you get a price. Say Jesus. Jesus. Call on that name. Jesus. Don't get ashamed of that name. Don't be don't be a dick at night. Don't be don't be don't be coming under the cover of night only praying when 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 you behind your closed door. Don't be ashamed of praising and saying the name. Give God some praise. Don't be ashamed of the name of Jesus. Jesus. So he 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 came. He was kind of ashamed, but he did come. Thank the Lord he did come, but we wouldn't have this text. So then get verse 3. Verse 3, let's read this together. Jesus answered and said to him. So he's asking, he's asking Jesus, how can a man inherit the kingdom of God? Let's read. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. Somebody say, Jesus said. Jesus said. See that? And if you... And if you look in your Bible in the King James, that's in red, which means it's an exact quote from Jesus. Let's read again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Stop right there. What am I trying to tell you? That with God, seeing is believing. See, the moment that you believe in Christ, the moment that you become born again, you will see the kingdom of God. Did you see that? If you're, if you're not born again, you know what? This Bible right here, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says a natural man cannot understand this Bible. It is foolishness unto him. That's why when you're talking to people and you're trying to witness them, they talk about, oh, Jesus, oh, you know, oh, I, you know, no, I got to, I got to, you know, get some money. Oh, Jesus, oh, no, I got to do some good works. Oh, Jesus, I ain't got time for that. Because it's foolishness under them because they can't see it. Now, if they really saw it, there's a scripture in the Bible that says if they saw the truth, they wouldn't have killed the Son of God. Amen? Amen. If they, that's why Jesus had to say, forgive them for they what? No, not what they do. They couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. There were times in all of our lives when we couldn't see it. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. I remember, I remember uh, criticizing folks. Look at them people. Look. Look at them, why are they out there doing that? Why are they out there passing the tracks? Why are they out there talking about Jesus? And I couldn't see it at that time. But my eyes are wide open now. Amen? Amen. Anybody's eyes wide open? Anybody want to talk about? He said, you said both of them. Oh, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So if we turn that around, inverted, that means when you're born again, you can what? See, see the kingdom of God. What did I say? Believing is seeing. seeing. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Nicodemus said to them, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Ooh, somebody say, God forbid. <laughs> that, that's just some, you don't even want to visualize that, huh? But, but that's all he could understand when Jesus told him, born again. The first thing he thought about was a physical birth. Uh, this is very important now. Stay with me. This, this conversation is very important. Because he wasn't born again, he could not see what Jesus was talking about. And when you can't see the kingdom, which is the kingdom is spiritual, then all you can see is what? That which is physical, natural. So when Jesus said born again, 
his mind, Nicodemus' mind went to a physical default, which was what? Physical. He's like, how could a man be born again? He can't get back up into his mother's womb. That's nasty. Woo, man. He's like, no way, man. And Jesus talked to him and he said, look what Jesus said, verse 5. Verily, verily. Somebody say, truly, truly. truly he said, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, this one phrase right here has been misinterpreted by a lot of people. And particularly people who couldn't see the truth. And some people who could only see their own human tradition. Some people who are Baptists have interpreted that to mean that unless a man be born of water, water baptized, baptized with water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. All you have to do is be in the spirit and look at the context of the verse to realize what he was talking about. He just said, he just said you had to be born again. And Nicodemus said, can a man be born again in his mother's womb? Physical birth. What, G, what this passage is talking about is two types of birth and the two types of things that exist everywhere, which is spiritual and natural. That's what it's talking about. You either have a natural birth or a spiritual birth. Can the church say amen? amen. And what Jesus said was truly, truly, unless a man be born of water, somebody say natural birth. Natural birth. Say, the, say the water sack the water in a woman. He said, unless you have that kind of birth, but then what? Then, and of the spirit. You have to not only have a natural birth, you have to have a spiritual birth or a spiritual rebirth. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, if you didn't get it right there, somebody say, go to the next verse. In other words, if you, if you disagree with me, you say, that's not what that meant, Pastor. Okay, somebody say, keep reading. Keep reading. Verse number six. That which is born of the flesh, flesh is what? Flesh. flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. What are the two things we're talking about here? Flesh and spirit. Flesh and spirit. Natural and spiritual. Those are the two types of birth. So, in conclusion, to be born again means to be born of the what? Spirit. Of the spirit. Give God some praise. You got that. To be born again means to be born of the spirit. That's what it means. It means to be born of the spirit. Not of the flesh. If all, everybody in here has been born of the flesh. The question is, have you been born of the Spirit? I said, have you been born of the Spirit? That's being born again. Where your spirit is made alive unto God. What does it mean your spirit is made alive unto God? It means that Jesus' blood paid the price for your sin, and it is sin that separates your spirit from communicating and communing with God's spirit. It's like a wall, a partition. And once that wall is knocked down by the blood of Christ, your spirit and God's spirit communicate, have fellowship, and you can hear from God like you're hearing from me right now. Give God some praise. Amen. That's what it is. Point number one, and the rest of my time, I got two points and I'm out of here. Point number one, revelation is a matter of the spirit. Revelation, in other words, revealing, revelation means to reveal that which is hidden. Revelation means to uncover or reveal that which is hidden. That which is hidden. You know, you don't, right now I have my robe on and I have a shirt under my robe and I have a pocket right here in my shirt. Now you don't know if I have a pin in there or not. So I would have to take the robe off and if I took it and pulled it back, you'd be able to see. Pastor has a pin in there or he doesn't. But that's what revelation is. It is, it is revealing that which you cannot presently see. Amen. Amen. So point number one is revelation is a matter of the spirit. Let's turn to the revelation passage. This is such an important passage because Ephesians chapter one is a passage that I'm praying as a pastor for each and every one of us. Because guess what? I'm not praying for you to have a million dollars. I, I'm to be honest with you. I'm not. I'm praying for you to have this revelation because if you get this spirit of revelation, whatever God, listen, if you get the spirit of revelation, whatever God has for you, you going to get and it's going to be good. So he has a plan for you. But the only thing that's holding you up in that plan is the revelation of what he wants you to do and what he wants you to have. And then when you're able to walk in that by faith, you will get every good thing that God has for you. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. People ask it all the time. Well, why? The pastor, what's my, what's my destiny? Where, what's my life supposed to be? What do I need to do? You need, first of all, you need the spirit of, of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And when you get that, when you get that, you can start walking in it because while you're waiting on God, God is really waiting on you. Amen? Amen. 
He already did it. Listen, on the cross, he said, it is finished. So guess what? Your plan is already laid up for you. Every good thing that God wants for you is laid up, but you can't see it with your natural eye, so you're going to need some what? Revelation. Say, somebody say, I need revelation. Say, that's what I need. Say, I need revelation more than I need riches. Say, if I get revelation, all the riches will come to me that God wants me to have. And hey, I ain't mad at you. Whatever God has for you, praise the Lord. But you, but but you know what? God knows who can handle it. Amen. I just I said God knows who can handle it. Sometimes you can't handle it because uh, you you just you, you just sometimes you can't handle it because you're not spiritual enough. Sometimes you can't handle it because you're not faithful enough. One of the things I've learned about success is the more this church grows, the more work I got to do. And I'm so glad that God doesn't give me everything at once because he's taking me from faith to faith. Because every time somebody joins the church, every time some, we get some new property in the church, it's more uh, faithfulness that I have to have. So God is saying, I won't give you. You know, we always look at that scripture the wrong way. We always say, God won't, listen to me, we, we know that scripture, 1 uh, Corinthians 10, 13. God won't allow you to bear more than you're able to bear. We always look at that as something that you have to bear that's a negative. But honey, I'm here to tell you today, here's a, here's a breaking news revelation to you. God won't allow you to bear more good stuff than you're able to bear either because you can't handle it. Give God some praise. You ain't ready for it. You ain't ready for it. You ain't ready for it. You know, just like it's like telling a baby. Uh, to, to drive a car. That child is not ready for that. They're going to kill themselves. In fact, most teenage deaths happen because of car accidents. Amen. Because when they first start learning how to drive a car, they, 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 they're not, they're not uh, uh, able to deal with it. So here we go. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16 through 18. Let's read together. Do not cease giving thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers, let's read together, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Church, those three verses that I just shared with you, that we just read, are three of the most important verses in the Bible. It is a prayer, actually, from the Apostle Paul. And he has enough sense to realize that though you are born of the Spirit, though you are born again, you need the Spirit of wisdom and revelation as to what you've been born into. In other words, you come into something, but you don't know all of what it entails. It's just like when you travel sometimes, and I've been there, I travel sometimes, and I go someplace, uh, whether it's a hotel or a resort or whatever the situation is, and I remember one time I went to this resort, and, and, and we got ready to, to leave. We were almost ready to leave, and I was like, went up to the front desk, and I said, uh, can you get me a listing of the movie theaters in, you know, nearby, because I'm thinking of going to the movie, take my wife to the movie, and they said, oh, Mr. Tucker, well, you know we have a theater right on property. I said, say what? <laughs> you have what? They said, oh, yes, there's a, there's a movie theater. I said, does it have popcorn? They said, yes, it has popcorn. <laughs> and, you know, and I, and I was like, property? In other words, you don't even understand what you've come into. You don't understand all the stuff. He said that you, listen, he said that you would know what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance. In other words, God has bestowed all this stuff in you, uh, to you, through Jesus Christ. And you don't even understand all the stuff that you already have. Somebody said, I already have a lot of good stuff. But watch this. Notice that he said, notice that he said, he wants the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Now, this is where a lot of Christians mess up. We're always trying to ask God to give us uh, our calling. We want God to, to give us our destiny. No, see, God already has a destiny for you, and you're going to have to be humble enough and, and, and enough faith and hope enough to trust the fact that he has a great plan for you. In fact, what I've known, noticed about God, I ask God for things, and now because I ask God, and I always quote 
uh, a verse at the end of this chapter, actually, that says, Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly. Don't you realize we serve a God of the more than enough? We serve an exceeding abundantly God. Uh, when you ask God like that, you think you're going to get A, but God gives you A, B, and C. He gives you the cake, the icing, the, the candles, and the lighter to light it. Amen. Give God some praise. I mean, he does more than what you can ask for. Because why? Because that's how he is. He really wants to bless you beyond what you can think. So, point number one, point number one was revelation is a matter of the spirit. In other words, it's a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And he prayed that they would get it, and you prayed this prayer too. I just gave y'all the hook up. I said I just gave y'all the Holy Ghost hook up. Y'all to give God some praise. I just gave you the Holy Ghost hook up. 